This episode is brought to you by Cash App. Cash App is the all-in-one app for spending, sending, and for setting easy to track savings goals. Speaking of setting a goal, Renaissance Tour is among us. I'm so, so excited for this tour. I set aside a certain budget to get the tickets. I have a glam budget for the concert. I have an outfit budget because I do want to, you know, I like dressing for the occasion. Her US tour dates haven't started yet, at least not at the time that I'm filming this video. So I feel like I have months and months to prepare. And just like with anything in life, set a goal or you have an event, you have something planned, you budget for it. I'm always just making sure and I'm hyper aware of like making sure I'm doing it in the most efficient way possible. And that would be my best advice to all of you too. So whether you're saving up for a trip or a wedding or a concert, Cash App has all the tools to help you take control of your money and your financial life. You can download it for free in the App Store and Google Play and find out for yourself why it's the number one finance app in the US App Store. <music> Hi guys, I'm Jackie Ina and welcome to Self Care with Jackie Ina. Today's guest really needs no introduction. Winnie Harlow is one of the first, no, she is not one of, she is the first black model with vitiligo to go viral for hitting the runway. I'm a personal fan and I know a lot of you guys who follow me probably are as well. I'm so excited to have her on my channel because not only am I gonna be able to get to know her more, but hopefully you guys are as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring on my girl, Winnie Harlow. We are on the beach. What better way to introduce Winnie's line, K Skin? It's now available at Sephora and it's a line of sun care, right? Yes. Okay, so let's get into it. Give me the tea. Okay, so K Skin is my baby. I have been working on it for three years. That's awesome. It is now available at Sephora, as you said, and also at kskin.com. I have always been so adamant about protecting my skin from the sun, but I also wanted to create sun care that you wanted to wear and looked amazing, felt amazing, but also protected your skin from the sun. Yes. So I want to do a little skincare, sun care hybrid. Exactly. So I want to get into showing you the product and what it looks like on our skin. Well, you don't really have to show me much because I'm already familiar with the brand. Right, right. I use all the products. I wore a case skin on my way here. What's your favorite? So I actually really like the body oil. I've never had an SPF oil because it seems like oil, wouldn't you think it would burn? But like, I love how it's just completely sheer. I love the way it makes my body glow and like the added benefit of sun protection. Yeah. So it's a win-win. It's a win-win. Let's -win. some more oil. Yes. So this is my favorite. It is the Isle Glow Face Lotion. Okay. SPF 45. Okay. And so I'll show you what it looks like on your skin. This is a new bottle, so I'm pump it a few times. It's so pretty. I really like this one too. So this is the face lotion. So okay. this is how it's going to look on your skin nice and hydrating glowy Ooh. you know brown girls love to glow as mm. well especially in the sun it's that season this is deep water dew it is a body serum so it's Ooh. the first product in the collection that doesn't have spf in it okay but it's because it's a body serum and i feel like you also have to pay attention to your skin when you're not in the sun true and make sure that you're staying protected oh my god you're you're are you serious <laughs> oh my god it's so pretty and it's so <gasps> buttery oh this reminds me of like mermaid like oh it's so iridescent it's pretty it's icy it's not ashy because sometimes you know metallic on dark skin mm -hmm. can go wrong Try real to still quick keep those like peachy tones in there to keep yeah. it a little bit warm oh, even though it's cool stunning. this is a serum a serum oh my yes. god so you're gonna get lots of nutrients in here as well we have the sea moss in here as well we have the aloe stem cells so i'm gonna put a squirt here and a squirt yeah. here oh my god that is so pretty stunning girl you did that 
Well, that was cute. I think we had a nice little beach day, a little beach moment. Should we go inside and chat a little bit more? Yeah, let's do it. Cute. All right, let's go. I have been a fan of yours for a very long time. And if you don't know who this queen is, you obviously should. This is Winnie Harlow, top model, period. But she is killing it. And we're just going to introduce you to my audience. Maybe some people already know who you are, but like haven't been familiarized with you. And I'm just really passionate about storytelling, especially as fellow black women, because I think it's important. Like sometimes when you know a little bit about someone's why, it helps you not only like empathize with people more oh, yeah, in general, sure. but like it helps other black girls out there that look like us are like, okay, she did it, I can do it too. Right. Cause I think that's feel important. Feel seen, feel heard, yes. and feel like you can do it too. I really wanted to talk about like what self care looks like for you. And you told us that you like going to the beach. Mm -hmm. Now we're both Leos and I'm with a Pisces who loves the water. I hate the water. <laughs> so what made you, I'm curious, okay. what was it that made self care scream beach too because this is actually what Winnie was like oh self-care we got to go to the beach yeah so know, what was it for you the funny thing is I can't swim so it's not about being like swimming deep into the ocean like I, I want to be in the water in the shallow end <laughs> same same <laughs> I'm Caribbean so my, mm -hmm. my heritage is Jamaican and I went to Jamaica twice a year every year my whole childhood my yeah. dad lives in Jamaica and just being near the ocean being in the ocean being on the beach it just it just represents my culture, I feel like, too. And it also makes me feel grounded. And also, looking out into the ocean, you realize like how small we really are. And I think that kind of puts things into perspective. That makes it scarier for me. Really? That makes it scarier, because I'm like, what? I mean, if I'm we in the middle of the ocean, it's scary. But like, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm on land. It's still on land. <laughs> so we just, what's yeah. that over there in the Himalayas? So far true over the horizon it just feels beautiful so it feels like home for you it feels like home i got to bring k-skin back to the islands and the inspiration for my brand was the caribbean and my heritage and my background a lot of the ingredients that i put in there like sea moss and aloe vera stem cells were from those things that were used on me when i was a kid growing up wow going to jamaica what you said about like having your family being the inspiration for your career your brand it reminds me of like how important it is in this industry to have some version of that because if you don't yeah you'll kind of see it and how people you know talk about that's themselves true, publicly yeah. how they you know yeah, yeah. just how they respond to certain things i think that's like you know yeah. kind of important for sure yeah that's a good way to put it into yeah. perspective like like they say, like hurt people hurt people. So like, it makes sense, it does. So Winnie, do you find that self care in general is like easier for you now? Or like, you know, how has it been navigating that since you've become like a household name? It's probably easier for me now, not because like I have more time, I probably have less time to do it now, but I think I find it so much more important now. My mental health and just being able to like step back from the hecticness and the craziness and really take care of me that I, I put more effort into making time for self-care myself. I feel like it's so important that you say that because a lot of times as women, we say, I don't have time, I don't have time. Listen, if it's important, you will make time. Yeah. I promise you, even if it's five, 10 minutes out of your day, make time or else your body will force you to make time. Yeah, even if that's like that five, 10 minutes, being able to meditate, pray, even, you know, read your favorite book or like something that just is for you and for you only, like yeah. very, very important. So you were the first, and I didn't know this, but the first viral black model with vitiligo to walk the runway. So no pressure, but like <laughs> what? Like, did you feel pressure to like uphold a certain standard just like as a black woman yeah, or in yeah, the industry? Yeah. Like, how did that feel? Yeah, I mean, I feel like anytime you are the first, there are going to be pressures. There's no way to get away for that. Yeah. But not only was I the first model with vitiligo, I was also like the only person in my community when I was younger with vitiligo and I always felt like I was the first or the only and wow. so I dealt with that growing up even and I feel like because I dealt with that growing up going into adulthood and into my career I was a little bit better prepared for having to deal with it again in a good way or a bad way like was it like re-traumatizing or was it like okay let's let's no I don't think it was re-traumatizing and I think only because like I have such strong black women in my family, like my mom, my grandmothers, my aunts that made me feel 
beautiful or made me feel confident as I was growing up. So being in the public eye now where there's even more opinions um, than just like, the kids at school or whatever the case is. I think just always staying grounded in that, in what my, my family has taught me, like my opinion is what matters to me about myself the most, right? So that means I want to be as good as a person that I can be, I want to be, like all these other things. And when somebody says that, um, I don't really like the way she looks or I don't get it, it's like, it's not for you to get. <laughs> it's not for you to get. What's you supposed to change? And like, yeah, exactly. That's who I am. That's who God wanted me to be. So I am, I'm more than blessed to be uh, in the position that I'm at. I am, and it was for a reason. All these things were for a reason. So who am I to judge and to question? But can't question what God set forward for my life. I don't know what you said, but period. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do a uh, pat on lesson. Said, right, we have to put a little subtitles. I think I got the gist. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I to, you know, question what God has prepared for my life? Congrats on the launch of K Skin. Thank you. I would love to talk about what inspired you to start the line. Like I said, my Jamaican heritage is what was the inspiration for K Skin. All the ingredients that I have known since being a little girl using sea moss on my skin as a mask, just the raw gel and consuming it for all the nutrients it has, but then also for it strengthening like the skin barrier, um, the moisture barrier in your skin and aloe vera for its calming and Love you know, aloe. soothing. Oh, of course, so, Shout so out good. To aloe vera. Mm -hmm. And like hydrating nectar, which is so juicy and rich and, and adds nutrients to your skin. All these things were things I was inspired by through my own heritage. And also, whew, I had a shoot in 2018 and I got the worst sunburn of my entire life. I wow. was shooting in the Bahamas and we were shooting from sun up to sun down for two days straight. And no one on set wanted me to wear sunscreen. Because, Why? Because it was leaving like a the blue, in purple, the tent. gray, yeah cast on my skin and I was in like bathing suits and stuff. Nobody wanted me to be purple or, you know, gray in these bathing suits and I got it, but I mean, it was a bad idea. Yeah. It was a really, really bad idea. Oof. So I got the worst sunburn ever. I had to have doctors come to give me injections for pain, for inflammation. I was so sore. I was flaking and scaling. And I was just like, you know what? Why isn't there something on the market that looks gorgeous on everyone's skin and yeah. that just protects you yes but then has all the like skincare benefits that you want to put on your skin you know and that is just gonna look seamlessly beautiful on everyone and so i decided you know what we're gonna create k skin and we're also going to make sure that if it's me who's creating this this brand it's true to who i am mm -hmm. and bringing my caribbean roots into the creation of the product as well so what's so funny about you saying that is I just remember that the first and the last time, and if you follow me long enough, then you'd remember this. The first and the last time I've ever been sunburned, I was in Bermuda. Mm. It was horrible. Yeah. I was like, you know, just being so careless yeah. outside, drinking, you're in the water. And yeah, I got a really bad sunburn. Mm -hmm. It was horrible. So painful. The worst. Yeah. I really just didn't want anyone to have to experience that because they didn't like the way sunscreen looks. So Winnie, you are one out of 100. I want y'all to understand how rare this is. One out of 100 women to raise over a million dollars in venture capital funds to start your brand. Again, <laughs> this does not happen for women. It's mm -hmm. very rare. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about what the challenges were, the obstacles, if any? Because yeah. I think, yeah. And the, the reason why I want to ask this question, because we have a lot of people who follow that are very business savvy. And I think that now more than ever, social media makes brand ownership look a lot easier than yeah. it is. And I really would love you to talk about like what that experience was like for you and getting the money, because brands do cost money. I think a lot of times people think, again, with like social media, that once a brand is here, it's like, oh, okay, cool, it came out of nowhere. But I've been working on this brand for three years from, wow. you know, creating the products and the packaging and the labels and everything. Like, yeah. I also created this brand during the pandemic when factories kept shutting down and, you know, like things kept, kept getting pushed back. So it was really difficult. But after doing all this work to create these products that I'm so obsessed with, it then came time for me to figure out how to 
create it in bulk and like yeah. get it to the people and like you know where was gonna be all these things so going into these meetings where you know I'm asking for someone to help me with my brand and hearing like those first few no's it was kind of like disheartening you know mm -hmm. like this is something that I really believe in but I think when it comes to something that you want to start you want to create like a business I think the most important thing to do is to create a business that you are passionate about 100%. because you need those people that you need help from mm -hmm. be that like the people who are you know that VC or if you are hiring people you need them to believe in this dream just as much as you believe in it and if you don't what are you giving them to believe mm -hmm. right so going into it hearing the first nose was a little disheartening but then i just remembered you know what this is something that i'm very passionate about this is something that i believe in and i just have to keep going i can't take these no's for an answer and also it's what i did to become a model as well i got a lot of no's in the beginning and i was disheartened about it as well at the time when you know one agency told me that if i wanted to be anywhere near the fashion industry i should maybe be a makeup artist and I was just like, what? Oh, that. Huh? I was like, huh? <laughs> okay, rude, but. Very rude. <laughs> Very rude. Very rude. Wow. But you know what? I was like, you know what? That's your opinion. Yeah. That's your opinion. And I may not be right for you, yeah. but I'm going to be right for someone else. And now I have amazing agents and people who believe me, but I also had to give them that feeling that they should believe me because mm -hmm. I believed in myself. Where do you think those no's were coming from? I think it comes from a lot of these investors being like older women. Yeah. And sometimes they just don't get beauty, you know? Like there may be other things that they say yes to, maybe it's tech, different things, whatever, but like sometimes they just don't get beauty. And I think it was really important for me when I did start learning more about venture capital and like investors and stuff like that. Like the people that I ended up going with were really, aware that women were not being seen in these places right. and were really adamant about investing in women-owned companies and companies of you know people of color and stuff like that so being able to work with someone who really saw me before i was even there mm -hmm. was incredible to me as well so let's talk about your experience as a model and being in the modeling industry in general how do you feel it's changed in terms of inclusivity for all people, if it's changed at all? Mm. Like, has it evolved? It's changed a lot, especially mm -hmm. I came at a time where there was no one who looked like me and no one who looked like a lot of girls who are now in the industry. So I definitely feel like there has been a lot of changes in inclusivity and kudos for that because that's amazing but yeah. there's always room to grow there needs to be like real permanent change in certain things mm. and not just doing things here and there doing things for the wow factor yeah. you know the juneteenth campaign uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> no i feel you though watermelon ice cream <laughs> like, but i feel like honestly you know what's so weird yeah. i feel like whenever a brand wants to like look progressive they always go to the black people. Mm. Why do they do that? Mm. We always we are get... trendsetters because yeah, we, we are, are we like... are goals. We are inspo. Like you are a mood board. You are a walking mood board, Jackie Ayana. You are a walking mood board. So like that yeah. is like the energy that I feel like we bring, and yeah. I feel like it's about acknowledging. You know, like it's fine to be inspired, but acknowledging. I agree. Yeah, acknowledgement yeah. is a big deal. Yeah, but to your point about like, I mean, nobody likes being tokenized, you know? For sure. Tokenism, 100%. Yeah. But I, I definitely have seen, and through like a lot of designers, you know, new designers that have been added into the fashion industry, new models, like I've seen a lot of change. Same. Um, so it, it has made me very happy. Do you love beauty or fashion more? I love fashion. I feel like it is the thing that I've been doing for the longest and I'm so grateful for the position in life that it's put me in. So I absolutely love fashion and fashion is fun. Clothes are fun. But I have always had a place in my heart for skincare. Really? And for beauty. I've watched you for so long, you know, like So I, that was your real first yeah, like Yeah. Okay. One yeah, hundred percent. Like I, I would watch you to like learn how to put lashes on. And like now when people oh are like, God. How you put lashes on so easy? I'm like, damn, that was Jackie, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like I learned so much. Like I I wanted to be a YouTuber. You know, like I are to this sure? day. I promise you, to this day, when I do my makeup, I'd be like, you're talking to the screen. <laughs> you're talking to the mirror. <laughs> okay, guys, next, I have the K-Skin 
oil. I'm just gonna <laughs> two pumps. Okay, I got the um, ABH Jackie palette, and we're gonna go no, in with. You, I'll never forget the stories that you made. So when my Anastasia palette came out. You were insane. You were like going crazy when you got that package. But I looked, it was so, it was the most authentic, genuine, funny yeah, like response yeah. I saw to someone unboxing my palette. And I was like, I had no idea Wendy like loved me this much. It was like so genuine and so cute. Yeah, yeah. What do you think the differences are in how the beauty industry has progressed and how the fashion industry has progressed? Beauty, I feel like if I want to find 10 different women who look like me on my explore page, I could do that in a second. Do you know what you also made me think? Beauty brands are way more influenced by each other than in the fashion mm, industry. I feel I like like see. by fashion house, yeah. like it is what they are. It's their right? own thing. It's their own thing. Got but it. like when, for example, NARS came out with the Radiant Creamy Concealer, every brand wanted to create a liquid concealer. You get what I'm saying? Like it's they true. see what someone else is doing that makes them successful, huh. other brands, and they want to jump on that. So now like when, um, incredible woman like Rihanna creates all these shades that nobody ever thought they needed to do. Yeah. Right? Then all these brands jump on that same way. Right, exactly. If you see someone doing better than you in beauty, like as a brand. You're taking notes. You're taking notes. I see. And I think in, in fashion, it's not really about taking notes because you're creating your own brand, your own your, your own style, your own yeah. whatever the case is. So And also a lot of fashion brands are older, so older. they're a lot more like yeah. Yeah, heritage yeah. brands that like are yeah. really slow to change. Yeah. Whereas a lot of beauty Not an like, excuse, but that kind of was just like no, I get an it. acknowledgement I get that it. I just like thought about like, oh, okay, you know what? I get it. In comparison, I think the reason why beauty grows faster in yeah. inclusivity is because they pay attention. Winnie, what has been your craziest experience while shooting where maybe you knew you stood out because you were black or maybe you knew you stood out because you had vitiligo or maybe both? I have a few. I have, I have maybe like a couple uh -huh. that I can think of at the top of my head. So... My first fashion week ever. I walked for, um, I walked in London Fashion Week. What year was that? Ooh, Wait. this was. If, there, if people are gonna find out what it is, then don't say it. Cause you know people Oh, well I already said it. it's the first show, but it's okay, okay cause okay. it had nothing to do with the brand. So Got it's it. perfectly okay. fine. Like okay. I love the brand um, and I'm so happy that they had me walk. That was the first show I'd ever walked for any fashion week ever. That's sick. They brought me to, to London. They had me open and close the show and I was really excited. That's um, huge. For my first show That's ever huge. to open and close a show, like I was like fully gagged. Like, yeah. can't believe this is ever happening to me. Never in my wildest dreams would I ever one think I'd be walking a runway during London Fashion Week, yeah. but then to be opening and closing, like, so <laughs> I'm here all excited. We walk the show, the rush is happening, the photographers are backstage, and a photographer comes up to me and says, Hey, can I take a picture of you? And I'm like, Okay, cool, no problem. Like, I have my little outfit on that I walk the show. Mm -hmm. And he's like, okay, I'll be right back. And he walks away and comes back with an iron board with a cow print on it. Excuse me? And so, um, with an ironing board, I said no, um, because it, it just- To him. I said no to him. My, okay. What was he doing with the ironing board? Like what? No, no, it was like was he... backstage, like maybe like one of the seamstresses yeah, no, no, were no. using it. I figure, but like, what it. was he trying to do? Like. What was he gonna do with the? Like, oh wait, it was giving like, stand next to it. Yeah, babe. Yes, you're, babe. Like whoever that was, you're you're embarrassing. You're embarrassing. Dragging. Like it. you're embarrassing. I could have cried in that moment. I'm not that girl. Like no, I. That's bad. I just like held it and I was just like, okay, like. You didn't know no. if that was normal or. Yeah. Oh, so you said no. I said no. I feel like dealing with those situations has has definitely made me respect myself a lot more. I think saying no, first of all, no as a black woman is my favorite word. Mm. And let me tell you something. People hate hearing it. Mm -hmm. They know what? I just be like, that's your problem and it's not mine. Like I am not gonna make myself available to be disrespected or just like taken advantage of in certain mm -hmm. workplace scenarios. And whatever comes after that or you not liking it is your problem, not mine. I remember one time backstage at a show I had my nails done and mm -hmm. they wanted to glue nails. These are cute, by the way. Thank you. I love these. They wanted to glue nails on top of our nails for the show. Yeah. And I was like, oh, uh, do you guys have the, the little sticky tabs mm -hmm. to, to stick it instead of actually gluing it? And they're like, oh no, he the designer wants it to be glued on. You have to. I was like, 
oh no, my nails, they gonna be ruined. <sighs> okay, cool. So I got it done, I had it glued on, like it was what it was. You know, I still stood up for myself and asked for what I wanted, but it, again, it's that person's vision. So mm -hmm. went along, got them done, did the show, everything was great. My manager comes backstage after and he was like, what happened? And I was like, what are you talking about? He was like, I heard that you were being super difficult and like something about the nails, like what happened? And I was like, I literally burst out in tears, like just being so excited about walking this amazing show. And then hearing I was being difficult because I asked for the sticky instead. And I mean, there's more tea to that story, but. It's the it's just the dramatic story. Yeah, yeah. Like saying no and saying no unapologetically. And trust me, it's not something that you wake up doing. I think you just get tired of like being stomped on all the time. So mm -hmm. yeah, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. I've had to come to the same, come into Jesus moment of being like, all right, do I want to keep walking away from these experiences, being embarrassed, feeling minimized, feeling small, or am I going to start putting my foot down and mm -hmm. like letting people know what time it is? And showing yourself how much you respect yourself. Yeah. As well. Yeah. So a lot of times self-care is like external, right? You know, bubble baths, masking, dancing, et cetera, et cetera. But I think we both know how important it is to take care of yourself internally mm. as much as, as it is important to take care of yourself externally. But as black women, you know, it's a fair balance. So what one piece of advice would you give to other women watching this on how they can balance that and make sure to just really put their mental health first and take care of themselves internally? Because it's so important. I posted something on my story recently and it really touched me. Um, it said something like, your mental health is more important than anything, more important than your career, more important than um, making money, any of those things. And I always say you can't pour into others from an empty cup. So yeah. making sure that you are spending that time with yourself and making sure that you're okay. Because while yes, your family, your friends, your job, all those things are very important, you can't get the best out of those things and you can't give your best into those things if you are not working from a full cup. Mm. Deep, honey. <laughs> yup. I agree. Pour into yourself so Pour that you can be yourself. able to. And not only just for the benefit of others, but for yourself too. For yourself, yeah. Exactly. For sure. What is one goal or opportunity that you haven't achieved yet and that you want to achieve? Ooh, I would say an American Vogue cover. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh my God, that would be huge. Yeah, that is a big goal for me. I love it. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for a rapid fire? Ooh, my fave. So these are just quick one word answers. Okay. Five seconds. You only have five seconds to think about it. Cool. Dun, dun, dun. Beach day or dancing? Dancing on a beach day. Uh-uh, it's one or the other. <laughs> We're gonna take dancing. Um. No, we're gonna say beach day. Okay, beach yeah, day. We'll beach take day. it. Mm -hmm. If you had to choose one, okay. <laughs> you can never apply sunscreen ever, or you can never wash your face ever. I gotta wash my face. So you're gonna get burnt again. That's what you're saying. I'm gonna have to stay inside for the rest of my life. Okay. Then. <laughs> All right, then. Because <laughs> I ain't getting burnt. And if you're okay. taking away my sunscreen, my good, good K skin, I'm gonna have to stay inside for the rest of my life. Just be in a dungeon in a cave, because I ain't got my K skin now. All right, speaking of which, <laughs> K skin body oil or K-Skin Body Lotion? I would say K-Skin Body Lotion. Beauty or fashion? I would say beauty, mm -hmm. although I'm obsessed with fashion. I love me some skincare. Bad haircut or bad dye job? Bad dye job. Okay. I have a really good haircut and the dye is bad. It's all right, like. You can braid it. Yeah, something. Like, like, you can, you can camouflage okay. it a little bit. Yeah, but if, I, if I'm like chopped here and like chopped here, mm -hmm. like we, we can't really roll with that. Dressing up or dressing down? Dressing down. Honesty or others' feelings? Honesty. <gasps> yeah, honesty. Ah! Definitely honesty. Owe money or owe a favor? Owe a favor, cause like, I don't owe money. Like, yeah. I do not like to owe money at all. We ain't doing the bill collecting. Yeah, we ain't doing that. Education or experience? I'd say experience. Um, okay. It's very giving Beyonce schooling life. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's giving, you know, like experience is the best teacher. Would you rather see the future or change the past? Change the past. I don't want to know the future. <gasps> oh. Yeah, I don't want to know the future. I feel like that's like jinxing things to me. Passion or stability? I think passion. Yeah. Okay. Because even like with being like a new 
business owner, like it, it has to do a lot with passion. There mm -hmm. isn't really, especially when it's new, there's not a lot of stability. You're learning, you're growing, yeah. but I think the passion gets you you through it. Fair enough. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> you did so good. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. Thank you. Thank you. I really enjoyed speaking with you. This is just so awesome, like getting to know you. And I really hope that, you know, hopefully people that and are it's watching. Long overdue. I know, it is long, long, overdue. long overdue. And hopefully people that are already familiar with you have gotten to know you a little bit more. So Winnie Girl, where can we find you, socials? On social media, you can find me at Winnie Harlow on all platforms, and I think on TikTok, either Winnie Harlow or Winnie Harlow 7. And then you guys can find Kskin at Sephora and kskin.com. Yeah, so make sure you guys follow her and check her out because we really appreciate you taking the time to come. We really enjoyed having you. Black women supporting black women. Period, okay. period. While you guys are here, because let's be real, if you made it to the end, you probably watched more than one video. Keep going. So if you want to watch another one, you can click this thumbnail right here and just keep the series going. Put on a playlist, subscribe, like, and comment. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.